Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Cutter One. I am your host, Jay, just Jay, your resident troublemaker and your resident culture warrior. I hope you are all having a beautiful, beautiful weekend um, as we head into the holiday, as we get, I guess we're getting close to Christmas, just a little bit over a week away. That's just awesome. All right, anyway, um, this is sort of like the weekly wrap up, which is like sort of something I've been trying to do. Um... <laughs> Yes, I will be mentioning ums. Uh, so this is where, for those who, who may be new, um, I go through the, 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 the week's videos that, that were uploaded and sort of look through the comments and, and see, you know, answer some questions that may have come up or point out comments where people have illustrated points that either I overlooked or maybe stuff I wasn't aware of or corrected, you know, sort of information if I had misspoke um, about something or, or, or had my facts wrong that, you know, people will call me out. I've always said, as long as things remain respectful, um, and, and constructive, you know, th there's nothing that we can't discuss as a Tolkien fandom, right? So, so that's what this show is, um, as well as I want to give some updates on some, some ideas I've, I've got going on and some plans I'm sort of trying to work on, but, that will be at the end of the episode, so hopefully you will stick around for that. So let's get right into it, um, and let's see what we have. Okay, so the first, uh, well, earlier in the week, one of the uh, the uh, videos I put up was an article that plays fast and loose with Tolkien facts that says Tolkien that says Melkor was a Maiar. Okay, right out of the gate, before I go any further, yes, I am fully aware that I said Maiar. And that I do tend to say Valar, okay? Um, I'm not going to make an excuse for it. You know, sometimes just without thinking, it just sort of rolls out that way. It's easier to say Maiar and Valar, right? Um, especially as, as a New Yorker, you, you know, we tend to like sort of have the, the sort of heavy R, like New York and, and stuff like that. But, I, I, you know, that's not an excuse, you know. I just, when I was putting stuff together, I am well aware that it should be Vala and Maya. Um, but I just put the R on. So there were some people that called me out in the comment section on this one, um, which I don't mind. I mean, just, they were a little snarky about it, but I mean, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm a grown ass man. I could take a little snark. Um, but yes, I, I'm fully aware of that and I acknowledge that. But, um, in this particular one, the comments were really, really good. A lot of people just, you know, you know, talking about where the, the article had stuff wrong, where they had stuff right. Um, I like uh, with Unheil Unheil Bargut uh, sixty three forty nine said. I guess the author the author just had the Reader's Digest short version of Tolkien available for their research, and one can be called lucky they didn't mention the Great Quidditch game. Uh, Salcor had won only by a small margin against Yogi Bear and his merry men from the Sherwood Forest that one day down in Narnia. <laughs> nice references there. Um, uh, let's see. Again, just be aware, folks. If if I if I don't read a comment, or it's not that that your comment wasn't good. It's not that I don't like your comment. It's just you know I'm trying to go for the ones that are sort of may contain some information or corrections that I think need to be done, or or just like funny the ones that jump out. If I don't read yours, don't take it personal, please. It, you know I I would be stuck doing a six hour video if I read everybody's comment. All right, um, but this is the one I wanted to mention was uh, Eraserhead six 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 chimed in and said obviously Melkor was a Maya is the biggest mistake she made, but it seems she doesn't have a full grasp on how singular plural works in Tolkien's world either. For example, Dodd says that Feanor crafted the Palantir, which is correct. However, there was more than one made, so they should technically be referred to as Palantiri. Um, also, Valar and Maiar are the plural terms for the singular words Vala and Maya. So Melkor is not a Maiar or a Valar, but a Vala. Um, also, if I'm incorrect in anything I said, someone please know. Nope, Eraserhead, you are spot on, dead on, absolutely 100% correct. Um, the follow-up was, and also, I do believe in Tolkien's work, it does say that Morgoth did lust after and gaze upon the Silmarils, but to say that they are almost that they almost turned the heart of the Dark Lord himself is a stretch and a liberty that Rings of Power made. 
and maybe it's just me, but considering Feanor dies in the first battle of the War of the Jewels, Dagar Nuin Gileth, um, I don't think Morgoth would have to worry about him as much as, say, his half-brother Fingolfin, or maybe an elusive and hidden city like Gondolin or something. Uh, to which Ronan Dave jumped in and said, technically Feanor fell in the second battle of Beleriand, as the first battle was fought after Melkor had returned to Angband, but before the Noldor arrived. But yes, Feanor was dead before even the sun first rose, so Morgoth had little to fear there early on. In the Silmarillion, it was also specifically stated that it was Turgon, whom Morgoth feared would somehow be his undoing, and that proved the case when Erendil, Turgon's grandson, successfully landed in Valinor and appealed for their aid. The author is either ignorant or deliberately gaslighting to get her ignorant readers to believe her and thus like the show more. Uh, again, spot on. Um, spot on, yes. And, and like I said, I'm, I admit my, my guilt at adding the R and my R and Valar. I apologize. Um, but yeah, Eraserhead and Ronan Dave, definitely spot on. Um, on on Heil... Yeah, okay, I messed that up. On Heil uh, Bargut... I can speak the German, just sometimes, you know. Um, again, I like that with the combination Yogi Bear and Narnia. Um, not a combination you see very often. So those were the ones that really jumped out with me in regards to that. So thank you, everybody, for chiming in on that one. Um, let's see what else we have. This was the other one, another article that's trying to adjust Tolkien lore to comport with the Rings of Power show. Um Oh, okay, yes. This one I wanted to mention. Board student 9468 says, Well, that is some overbearing hatred of that show. You don't know Tolkien better than Miss Dots or me, nor the other way around. Uh, it's Miss Dots. Dodd. I think it's D-O-D-D-S. Um, while the show is indeed a mediocre, ca a mediocre cash grab, welcome to capitalism, the lore is totally fine. That's where I got to stop you there. Okay. Uh, they purposely placed it in a time where Tolkien didn't write much, so they have the freedom. Um, and while they may have failed some of the characters, they didn't deface or over, I'm assuming you meant overwrite them. And this instance is very petty since it doesn't even change the meaning of that scene. Regardless of reference point, she passed the test to fend off Sauron, both from her mind and from Middle Earth. Um, and what the article was about was that they were trying to give new meaning to the scene in um, Peter Jackson's adaptation, or as well as, as in the books where uh, Galadriel's looking into the pool, uh, her, her pool of seeing with uh, Frodo, and um, she, you know, Frodo offers her the ring, and she says the famous line that she's passed the test and now she can, you know, go into the West and fade as Galadriel. And so the author of the article, um, I believe it was Emily Dodds, was trying to make the case that, well, this, in, in light of the Rings of Power, this means that, you know, she she's passing the test on to Frodo is what she means, okay? Um, to which I had done a video saying that's complete and utter nonsense. Now, board student 9468, um... I do, in fact, hate the show. I'm, I'm not even going to lie. And, you know, if you, if you understand, if you think it's overbearing and stuff, that's fine. You're welcome to your opinion. I'm not going to take that away from you and stuff like that. Um, but to say I don't know Tolkien better than Miss Dodds, um, I, I, I would disagree. Um, based on the articles she's written, and it's, this wasn't the only one. We've, for those who are subscribed to the channel and who've watched my other videos, you know this isn't the first time we've had to sort of analyze stuff that Ms. Dodds has put out, and a lot of it is just either completely off the wall, not correct, or a, a hardcore misinterpretation of the information she may ha have. So I would argue that I might, I might, Again, I'm ne I've never claimed to be a Tolkien scholar, okay? Um, but I would make the case that I could probably do better when it came to writing articles about Tolkien and his work than Miss Dodds seems to be able to do, okay? And I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, now, to say that... Uh, Rings of Power, the lore is totally fine. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to disagree with you. All day, every day on that one. Rings of Power, totally 
fucks the lore. And I'm not even talking like take you out to dinner and at least try to wine and dine you fuck. I'm talking about back alley prison style spit in your hand okay so no i'm sorry uh you cannot make the case that rings of power leaves the lore totally fine um so as a matter of fact and, and to illustrate my point uh eight pointed star painting um follows up followed up with a separate comment but they said you can't compare the rings of power to the lord of the rings films or books because rings of power doesn't follow any of the second age source material we know what galadriel did because tolkien wrote what she did during the second age rings of power is just bad fan fiction absolutely um and that's the that's that's the point that was that was the point so anyway those were some of the ones that jumped out at me uh, regarding that particular video. Let's move on to the next one. All right, and this one was uh, The Rings of Power Gets Snubbed at the Golden Globes with Zero Nominations. Um, Valentina Feina, and correct me if I, if I mispronounced that, Valentina. Uh, Valentina Feina4032 asked, uh, they said that they are going for the Emmys, not the, the Golden Globes. What do you think about their Emmy nominations? Emmy nominations to which I responded by saying thank you it's a good question and I tried to give it some thought and I do think that uh, Ismail Cruz Cordova may get a nomination for best supporting actor category as Randir um, Morphid Clark may get a nomination for best leading actress in Galadriel I think because of the hype that they, they may be included in there um and I definitely think that they might get some nominations for like visual effects, set design, soundtrack, that sort of stuff. But, and as I pointed out in my response, um, my, my thought process is, is that because, okay, there was a time when a show like Rings of Power would be one of maybe two or three total shows that had a certain level of visual effects and set design and costuming and so on and so forth. Um, but that's no longer the case. You have, you know, Andor from Star Wars um, and, and, and all the Disney Plus Star Wars stuff. You have all the Marvel stuff. Um, you have the House of the Dragon as well as Rings of Power, as well as other shows, you know, um, Wheel of Time and other Netflix or Amazon or HBO or, you know, Paramount Plus shows that are very effects laden, very um, costume heavy in terms of trying to look like, you know, set pieces and, and look a certain way. So I don't know. There was a time I would say they would almost be guaranteed to win a VFX or a set design or a costuming um emmy i don't know in today's day and age with the competition that's out there i think the professionals in those industries will see the same lack of craftsmanship that rings of power displayed in those categories as well so i think it'll get nominations simply because of the hype and the name value but i can't see it coming away with more than maybe one or two uh, so I'm thinking total nominations, maybe, I don't know, four to six, maybe. Um, but I can't see it coming away with more than one or two. And I'd be seriously surprised if it's for any of the actors or actresses. Um, I believe they put Morphid Clark and uh, Robert Arameo, uh, who plays Elrond. I think they put up in the leading actor and actress category. And, um, Ismail Cordova was in supporting. I, I don't see them, them getting it. I, I don't see them winning any of those categories, but I could be wrong. We'll have to wait and see. But, um, yeah. So Valentina, thank you very much for that question. That was awesome. Other than that, you guys were just kind of like on the same page as me and that we all just thought it was funny that they got nothing, nothing at the Golden Globes, which was rather interesting. All right, so this is, uh, the article says, Rings of Power Galadriel shows how elves can fall from grace. Um, and plus, I also went on a sort of a tirade about uh, religion. Um, uh, Camion53 uh, left a comment saying, uh, Melkor slash Morgoth follows the Lucifer's fall more closely, which itself is an extra biblical story. Um, Sauron is from the start someone filled with the greed of control. Aule does not give him that 
enough to satisfy him, so he changes his alliances to Melkor. Um, I think already. Yeah, um, and then other people were like uh, Jake Violet, 2195, saying they never showed uh, Guy Ladriel in a state of grace from which she could have fallen. Um, she was an intolerable shrew from the first episode. Uh, so, yeah, I... I think the point I was trying to make was that they try to show that um, the article was trying to say that Galadriel shows how these quote unquote perfect elves that Tolkien gave us and that Peter Jackson showed us could could be less than perfect to to which my initial thinking and and even it was in the thumbnail was like, no, we got that very early on. Uh, with with Feanor and the Oath of Feanor and the Sons of Feanor and Kinslaying and so so we saw very early on how elves can fall from grace, if you will, and that um, Tolkien doesn't give us that through Galadriel. Like we we see elves as less than perfect through Galadriel because e even in Tolkien's writing of her, she is less than perfect. Okay. Um, but she, you don't. She doesn't have the the fall that say Feanor or his sons have, right? Or those bound by the oath have. So, but but the article tried to imply that, and that's where I sort of was like, no, you're wrong, and I called it out. And for the most part, a lot of you guys agree. With, although, um, like I said, somebody, as you could see there, said wrong, but never said exactly what was wrong, even though I asked, like. Tell me if you think I'm wrong, at least tell me where you think I'm wrong. But th they didn't. Um, and that's fine. That's their prerogative. But so so that was my issue was that, you know, we already we know how elves can fall. We know how how they're not perfect. Um, the show did not give us that through Galadriel. The only way you could say you got that through Galadriel is if you are coming into Tolkien with no prior knowledge about any of it. And then I, I sort of went on to because the article also tended they, they made the statement that's that Sauron sort of plays the role of devil right he's like the devil right and and that the, he's the satan figure is is what they were the article tried to imply or or state i should say um my thing was no you can't say that because again if you're familiar with tolkien's work if you look at uh melkor slash morgoth he is more in line and i said the luciferian luciferian figure right um i.e giving the devil a name yes i understand it's not very specific to the bible but as as it's come down through the ages today we refer to the devil of the bible as satan slash lucifer you know it, yet he goes by many names right so i said luciferian right and what i meant by that was that melkor's story of how he goes from being um, one of the the Einor that sort of is one of he's like right up there as like one of the best, right? Because he knows a little bit of everybody else's song of creation, okay? And and his fall from from that grace, which is very, I don't want to say anal analogous, um, applicable to use Tolkien's terminology, is very applicable to the story of Satan slash Lucifer in the Bible, right? That that whole, you were created as one of the most beautiful angels and you challenged the one God who created you and that brings about your fall, right? So the, uh, the point I was trying to make was that Melkor fills that role, not Sauron. Sauron, to me... And I think I said it in the video, but I'll reiterate it. To me, Sauron sort of fills the role that the Antichrist fills in Revelations. Okay, and again, I, I will state for the record, I am no biblical expert. I am no scripture expert. I'm not even very religious. I'm, I believe in a God, but I'm, I'm not religious. I don't, I'm not a churchgoer or anything like that, right? I, I just know enough about it. Um, but from what I, I know about the revelations is that the Antichrist isn't the devil himself per se. He's sort of paving the way for the devil, right? He's like sort of one of the devil's lieutenants, which I think is applicable to how you should view Sauron in relation to Melkor slash Morgoth. 
Melkor Morgoth being the Satan, the Luciferian figure, and Sauron being more of the Antichrist type figure in regards to the role they play within the story, right? So and that was the point I was trying to make. Um, you know, there seemed to be some contention about that. Somebody was asking me to quote some scripture to them, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I, I I'm, I'm not very religious. I can't quote you scripture. I just know, you know, the basics, if you will. So that was my take on that. Um, but yes, I like uh, T Terry Stewart, 1973, came in and was like, who's wrong, Cutter? No, he's right. Uh, the Thomas Beacon, uh, the author of this ridiculous article, correct uh, and mon... Oh, correct and monumentally so if you're saying that he was the one that was wrong. Um yeah, I again, if you guys think I'm wrong on something, that's fine. I have no issue with that, but you at least got to let me know so I can see if I am, right? You can't just be like, wrong, motherfucker, and then just leave it at that, right? Anyway, so those were the comments on that video. Let's keep moving along because I don't want this. Oh, this is already, we're already at the 20-minute mark. All right. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, this was the one of Elves and Men, how ROP uh, missed its chance at telling a compelling and fascinating story. You guys had lots of great comments here, um, especially Terry Stewart. Dude, awesome comment. Laid it out. Perfectly. Yes, I understand that you said I would not quite correct about Arwen, and I'll take the L on that one. You, you are right. Again, I don't claim to be a Tolkien scholar, okay? I, I claim to be somebody who's into this stuff. I have the books. You guys know it's a lot of stuff. Sometimes you misremember something or, or you know, you may get the information jumbled up. It's been a while since I actually read um, Lord of the Rings. Um, so yes, admittedly, my information might my, was slightly off on that. But um, I'm going to read this because what, what Terry uh, wrote, because it's actually, it's really good. I liked it. Terry Stewart, 1973, says, I'm not sure you're quite right about what happens to Arwen. She is half elven, like her father Elrond, and in that specific case can choose which race she wants to belong to, just like Elrond and Elros did. Um, correct. And in marrying Aragorn, Arwen, like Elros before her, chose mortality. Remember Arwen and Aragorn's last words together. Quote, Nay, dear lord, she, she said, that choice is long over. There is now no ship to bear me hence, and I must indeed abide the doom of men, where I, whether I will or nil, the loss and the silence. But I say to you, king of the Numenorians, not till now have I understood the tale of your people and their fall. As wicked fools I scorn them, but I pity them at last. For if this is indeed, as the Eldar say, the gift of the one to men, it is bitter to receive. So it seems, he said, but let us not be overthrown at the final test. Who of old renounced the shadow of the ring? In sorrow we must go, but not in despair. Behold, we are not bound forever in the circles of the world, and beyond them is more than memory. Farewell. Uh, so she does. She has chosen mortality, abiding with the doom of men, and will die, and her soul will pass along with Aragorn's beyond the circles of the world. In this case, bear a thought for Elrond. Remember from Return of the King book where they meet for his last time. Quote, and Arwen Evanstar remained also, and she said farewell to her brethren. No one saw her last meeting with Elrond, her father, for they went up into the hills, and there spoke long together, and bitter was their parting, that should endure beyond the ends of the world. Normally elves would always be able to see their children, and they have immortal lives in Valinor, whilst humans would see their children after death beyond the circles of the world. Not so for Elrond and Arwen, they they are separated until the end of the world. Uh, absolutely 100% dead on, Terry. Um, yeah, I was wrong about Arwen. For some reason, I, I had this picture. And, and again, I had this picture of her being in this sort of de depression state. And ultimately, she ends up in it, the Lorien. She goes to what was Lothlorien. And that's where she ultimately passes away. Um, but from what I, I remembered, it was like years after, after Aragorn, but, but again, you know, I, I, I could take the L on this one, not a problem, but well said, well done. Excellent quote. 
excellent quote. Um, so yeah, and and you know, uh, Kate Flanagan, nine three five five. Terry Stewart explains it very well. Most people don't seem to realize that elves are bound to Arda forever. To Arda forever while men kind of get to go to heaven so the tragedy is that when they are separated by death they are separated for eternity so sad to think about elrond and how he lost his parents and his brother to and his daughter forever um yeah and, and see and that that was the point i was trying to make when i when i did this video was because the, the whole arondir uh bronwyn thing they don't sell it as being anything more than just like hey we're the occupying army and you're the local girl and i'm one of the soldiers and we're gonna get together and sure some people may not like it because we're not the same you know in this sort of allegorical sense and i i guess of interracial couples and I, tolkien definitely presents his elves and humans getting together and what that means and and what's involved in that as being way 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 more involved emotionally spiritually um physically and so i thought they just missed out on an opportunity it's probably one of those rare instances where the rings of power i'm like you know what you could have done this so good right normally with comes to rings of power i'm like you guys are taking a complete shit on tolkien um and his work and i and i hate you for it but this was one of those instances where i'm like you know what like, you know, as much as you may think I'm a racist because I'm pointing out that it's just, just some random black elf, um, I'm not, I actually wanted to see them do more with these characters and their quote unquote love story. And I think they completely dropped the ball. Um, and, and it was a shame because it's one of those things that Tolkien took very seriously. He didn't just, you know, write it on a whim. All, all of his couplings relationships between elves and 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 men um in 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 that specific you know relationship level um were very important um whether they seemed like it at the time or not they they sort of rippled throughout time if you will um and i just thought that, that the show missed out an opportunity but um yeah thank you terry for that awesome uh comment i thought it was great Thank you very much for that, sir. And like I said, I will take the L on that one. Not above admitting when I make a mistake. All right, next one. Rings of Power announced season two to be helmed by all women directors. Again, um, I like uh, Panzerfaust9812. Western cinema is so terrible these days. I, You know what, dude? As much as I would love to disagree with you, I can't. You're right. Western cinema, cinema has definitely lost its edge. I, 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 I got nothing. Um, uh, we got uh, V Clash uh, 4157 Amazon has their excuse ready if you hate season 2 you're a sexist misogynist toxic male yeah I mean you know it, it, it's true uh, I, again I don't care you know uh, uh, I think some people were saying um, uh, that you know wouldn't care you know some people were saying that you know it's not a big deal. It's all female directors, you know, and, and that's fine. Again, the point I, I was trying to make is I'm I'm not upset that it's all female female directors. I honestly couldn't care that it's female directors. Um, I am upset with the specific directors that they chose who happen to be female. Okay, and that's strictly based on their work. Okay, has nothing to do with their gender or their sexuality or whatever. It's strictly based on their work. Um, I don't care that they're female. What bothers me about the whole thing is that Amazon feels that that is the most important thing to tout about season two, right? You don't see them playing up the fact like, hey, we're 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 gonna be more lore based in season two. We're 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 sort of pivoting and trying to bring it back in line with what with what Tolkien wrote. You don't see that happening. Instead, what you see is like, hey, we got all women doing it. And whenever you're behind the camera aspects, whether it's your crew, your directors, your writers, and stuff like that, when you are touting their diversity or or you know ability well not not even abilities if you're just touting the diversity of your crew i.e our writer's room is like made up of 75 percent women or our directors are all women or you know our cinematographer is this you know 
non-binary Asian furry. You know what I mean? It's like if if that's the most important thing you can say about your show, it doesn't bode well for those of us who are looking for a good story and a good ad adaptation of Tolkien because you're not talking about the adaptation or the story. You're talking about the people behind the camera making it, and that frightens the hell out of me. Um, so, yeah, I don't care about their sex. I just think it's funny that that's the route Amazon would choose to go to. Um, but, hey. It is what it is, right? We'll see how we'll have to see how season two plays out, or I'll have to see. <laughs> I'll let, let you guys know because I know some of you are like, "Fuck this, I'm not watching it." Anyway, uh, article postulates that sexist will be the new racist in defending. This was literally back to back because almost the very next day we had another article. Basically, this author coming out and basically saying what we already know is that, um, yeah, that's going to be their 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 thing to have in their back pocket. Oh, you criticize season two, you must be sexist. You criticize season two, you must be a misogynist. You don't like what our directors did? Well, that's because they're women and you obviously hate women. You know, forget the fact that I'm a married man, married to a woman, um, born from a mother, has a sister, has a daughter, okay? But, of course, I hate women because, you know, I dare question Galadriel and, and her insufferable bitchiness. But anyway... I, I digress. Um, let's see. Here, uh, Ronnie Dave says, you hate rings of power because they have black elves and, and dwarves. Correction. They have one black elf and one black dwarf. That's not Tolkien. That's token. Amen, brother. They're shoehorned in there along with a black Numenorean queen and a, with a white father who, who later mistakes a pale younger girl for his daughter. You can't make this crap up, right? Like, seriously. Okay, I, uh, at least I'm not the only one seeing this crap for what it is. Thank you. Um, then we have the sexist accusations thrown out there because fans don't like an unlikable female protagonist who's arrogant, threatens genocide and torture, and doesn't tell anyone that Sauron is back out of a selfish fear they might try to send her back to heaven again. Anyway, I wish they'd tout good story and character over the diversity of the cast and crew. That's exactly what I just said, man. Dead on, Ronan. Um... Dead on. I'm sorry, did I? Did, Ronan Dave. I, I think I said Ronnie. Uh, Ronan Dave. Uh, sorry about messing that up. Yeah, you're 100% right. Everything you wrote there, 100% right. Um, I don't know what else to say about that. It's, it's, ugh. Okay, this is, uh, the article suggests Rings of Power could give us Glorfindel. All right, this is, this is the, the last one um, from yesterday. Um, and I think uh, Retro Pages says they will call an elf Glorfindel and he will be nothing like actual Glorfindel. And they'll say, hey, but here's Glorfindel. We're being more canonical. These are the, our familiar names from the books, don't you see? Next, they'll have a character named Tom Bombadil. Um, yeah, you might be right. Scarily enough, you might be right. Um, d d let's see. Uh, Tunguska Lumberjack. Oh, okay. Tunguska Lumberjack 9987 says, if they bring Glorfindel to the show, you can count on him having short hair, being overly feminine, and being a less capable warrior than Galadriel. I hope they don't even try to inject him into the show. If that was supposed to be him behind Elrond in the movie still, referring to the Jackson movies, then I'm glad that Jackson didn't name him as such either. He looked terrible, but it would still be better than what Rings of Power would do to him. They should just quit while they're behind before they run even more of Tol before they ruin even more of Tolkien's vision. Um, yeah, definitely agree with you, uh, Tunguska Lumberjack. Dead on. Um, I like it. Vanna Dot Johnson eight eight four five says. Um, does it really matter who circles of weakness bands of impotency <laughs> portrays? It is still going to be hot garbage. The raw sewage that is the Amazon production will show us Glowfindel, not Glorfindel, the same way they gave us Elwand. 
<laughs> instead of Elrond. They also gave us Guy Ladriel in place of Galadriel. He will become lucky with his pot of cereal gold, defeating a Balrog with sweet surprises instead of his sword. No male can sw swing a sword better than Guy Ladriel, although Sourbrand White can teleport a little better than her. Heal better than her. Worked the sword and dagger better, too. He busted up those guild, no yeah, guild Numenorians more believable than she did with the soldiers. That is true. Come to think of it, he was the only male who thematically bested her throughout the entire show. That is also a good observation and very true. There can be only one, so Glorfindel will be neutered. Even Gilgalad was handing out orange stars, yellow moons, green clovers, and resort vacations to Valinor. Definitely Celebrimbor tasted the blue diamonds, purple horseshoes, and pink hearts, lucky charms. Circlets of weakness definitely was magically delicious. <laughs> I like that. That was awesome. And now I'm hungry. Thank you, Vanna. Um, that was awesome. Yeah. I, I got nothing to add to that, man, other than the fact that I definitely am jonesing for some cereal now. God damn it. Um, so, yeah, that's where we're at. Um, in terms of your guys commentary this week which i thought was great you guys were awesome there was like a lot of funny shit in there um again corrected me because you know uh, with the r win thing and yes i understand i said my r in the title not maya i'm sorry i will be more careful with my r's going forward somebody also pointed out throughout the week that i say um a lot and you are absolutely right my wife has even pointed that out to me she's like you gotta Stop saying fucking um all the time. Um, to the point, see, I just did it. To the point where she even leaves me little, little, you know, cards here on my keyboard saying, watch the goddamn ums. I think I, I want to get like a custom like cereal or custom like potato chips. I'm going to call them watch ums because they're going to be, they're perfect for watching movies with. Like maybe like bags of popcorn called Watchems, but yes, I, I I it is something I'm working on. Not not there yet, not perfect, but it is something I'm working on. All right, so that was all your comments. Thank you everybody who who got involved in the conversation and the comments. So thank you. I just if I didn't read your comment, it doesn't mean it wasn't good. It's just there was a lot a week's worth of videos and comments to go through, and I just sort of was like picking out stuff um, as I was looking at it. In terms of the channel, some updates that I promised that if you stuck around to the end, which um, it's, we're coming up on 38 minutes. If you're still here, God bless you. I freaking love you. So some things I wanted to touch on was that I am working on the live streaming stuff. It, 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 it will be happening. Live streaming is going to be happening very, very soon. I'm thinking probably be within the next week or two. Let, let's say two for now. One of the things I'm working on is I'm trying... I recently got my hand on a 3D resin printer, like the, the actual whole printing setup. So what I'm trying to do is figure out if I can incorporate that somehow into sort of doing a trivia thing with the, the, the live stream where I could offer you guys, maybe somebody gets a prize. And some of the prizes I was I was sort of looking at was maybe using the 3D printer to sort of give you something Tolkien-based or or lord of the rings based as a prize um so my my initial thought was and uh let me close this down was i found a bunch of sites so here this is this is it this is what i was looking at um i found this site that offers 3d printable models of things and um i, I came across they have a whole line of sort of statuettes that are 3D resin printable of Lord of the Rings based or Tolkien based stuff. And, and I'm just showing you guys Sauron because that's the one that caught my eye. I was like, ooh, I, I would want one of those. But I'm thinking of potentially purchasing the files to have, a, they, they've got Galadriel, Kate Blanchett's Galadriel, let me be specific, as well as uh, Hobbits and Gandalf based on the Peter Jackson stuff, not Rings of Power, um, as well as the the Witch King. Uh, I think they also have a Balrog. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, and you guys let me know in the comments section below if you've stuck around this far, um, 
when I start doing the live stream, maybe either I say monthly because that would give me the time. Maybe monthly there will be a, a trivia stream that will happen monthly where we'll just sort of talk on a, a, a subject or go over a subject and there'll be trivia questions worked throughout the, the stream. And the person who maybe gets the most right or or who gets like the the final question correct um, will I'll, I'll do a 3D print like the one you see on screen. I, now, I, I'm not going to paint it for you. Let's not get crazy now. OK, I won't paint it for you. But what I will do is I will print it and I will ship it to you. I will send it to you. And then if you want to when you print these things, they tend to be gray. They look very gray. Um, if you've ever seen like a plastic model kit before it gets assembled and put together, it's sort of that very uniform gray, um, almost like a primer gray. That's how these will print out with the resin. Um, everything will be a sort of primer gray. I am just trying to figure out how to work that trivia thing in so that, again, um, whoever would win the trivia for that particular month um, or, you know, that particular stream would I, I could do a sort of 3D uh, resin print of some Lord of the Rings based stuff and I would send it to you. And like I said, I'm not going to paint it. OK, what you're seeing there on the screen, somebody obviously took the time out and painted it. And that's all well and good. You want to paint it, knock yourself out. But whoever, I, you know, I'll send it to you raw. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the meat and give it to you raw. Um, as Durin the third or Durin the fourth would say. Um. So that's one of the things that's sort of been holding the whole process up because I'm trying to figure it out. Like I mentioned in yesterday's video, I want to make it something where you guys have a reason to, to show up and get involved and participate. And, and I don't want it to just be like, hey, here's my little Tolkien stream. Just send me some some donations and some subs and give me money, yo. Um, I, I can't stand that. I, I think it should be a two-way thing, right? So maybe, like I said, once a month, well, there'll be some trivia and maybe it's trivia based on like the, the streams that led up to that final monthly stream so you know sort of see who's been you know paying attention and, and coming into the streams and getting involved that sort of thing um but anyway i was thinking about the the whole 3d resin statuettes as as a prize so let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below in terms of other things i want to give a shout out here um to macaroo 112 Okay. Um, he has been awesome. He has been uh, a really, really, really enthusiastic supporter of, of the channel in helping me grow this thing. Uh, I don't know him. You know, we, we never met. He has just been somebody who has, you know, subscribed to the channel, tends to be very active with the comments and stuff like that. And he's reached out to me sort of behind the scenes on, on the back end um, with sort of ideas and suggestions and, and, for other channels to sort of reach out to and maybe see if we can't work with and so on and so forth. So I just wanted to personally take a moment to say a big thank you to uh, Macaroo 112. You are awesome, brother. Um, I have gotten your emails. I've been looking through all the stuff that you sent me. Um, I've also reached out to, and some of you guys may be aware of this channel, Tolkien Untangled. I've reached out to Tolkien Untangled to see a possibility of maybe doing a stream or something. I will let you know if I hear anything back and if that's something that will come about, but I have reached out to Tolkien Untangled as well as Men of the West, as well as uh, Girl Next Gondor. Um, so I am working on things behind the scenes. I know, you know, I, I don't want it to just be the channel where I just go through and find articles about Rings of Power and just like, you know, bitch and moan and complain about other people and what they don't what they claim to know or don't know about Tolkien and stuff like that I want the channel to be more than that and to grow and stuff like that and incorporate lore and and in interactivity and, and be, be a fan space if that makes sense so anyway that's been the week so far guys um, I'm sorry this video has gone so long I will talk to you again on the next one remember if you like the video like the video if you feel like sharing the video please feel free to do so if you haven't subscribed already I would hope you would consider giving me your subscription it will help the channel grow and if you have subscribed thank you thank you thank you you are awesome guys I will see you in the next video again apologies for this going so long thank you everybody who commented and uh, left questions comments and some funny ass shit down in the comment section below and macaroo 112 thank you buddy i will talk to you soon all right guys peace out be good be safe be awesome i'll talk to you guys later